Today I've got a problem from Step 3 2014, so Cambridge University's Maths Entrance Exam. The numbers FR satisfy FR is bigger than FR plus 1 for R equals 1, 2, and so on. So in other words, F is a decreasing function. Show that for any non-negative integer n, k to the n times k minus 1 times F of k to the n plus 1 is less than or equal to the sum from R equals k to the n up to k to the n plus 1 minus 1 of f of r, which is less than or equal to k to the n times k minus 1 times f of k to the n, where k is n integer bigger than 1. By taking f of r equals 1 over r, show that this inequality here is true, that the sum from r is 1 to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 of 1 over r is sandwiched between n plus 1 over 2 and n plus 1, and deduce that this harmonic sum doesn't converge, and now by taking f of r is 1 over r cubed, show that the infinite sum of the reciprocals of the cubes is less than or equal to 4 thirds. We're going to dive straight in with this one. Um, what we're going to do is look at this first part. I'm just going to show this inequality here. The lower bound is very similar. So we're just going to kind of follow our nose for this. So the sum from r equals uh, k to the n up to k to the n plus 1 minus 1 of f of r. Well, we're just going to see what upper bounds we can give to this. Well, this thing that we're adding up, f of r, is there an upper bound to this in this interval? And the answer is yes, there is. What's the upper bound? Well, f of r, since it's a decreasing function, the biggest value that it can take is this lower bound here, which is uh, k to the n. So this is going to be less than or equal to the sum from r equals k to the n or up to k to the n plus 1 minus 1 of just f of k to the n. And now, this is just a constant with respect to this sum. So this is just going to be f of k to the n multiplied by the number of terms in this uh, kind of sum, which is simply going to be k to the n plus 1 minus k to the n. And then if you just factor out the k to the n, you get this thing here. And so that gives us our upper bound, and you can do something very similar to get this lower bound here. OK, part one. Uh, which I guess is taking the second part, we want to take f of r equals 1 over r and show that this sum here is true. Okay, well, look, as with most step problems, we want to use the first part or previous part. And so here we probably want to check, is f of r a decreasing function? Thankfully, it is. 1 over r is a decreasing function. So we can use the result from part a. But now the only difference is this sum that we had here was going from k to the n up to k to the n plus 1 minus 1. Whereas here, we've got the sum going from 1 to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. So actually, what we need to do is do a kind of double sum here. So again, I'm just going to show the upper bound of this inequality. It's very easy and very similar to show the lower bound. We've got the sum from r equals 1 up to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 of 1 over r. And we're going to write this as a double sum. So we want to use this thing here. We're going to go from k to the n uh, up to k to the n plus 1 minus 1. And here, k is actually 2. So maybe I'll replace k with 2 here. So 2 to the n up to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. And our sum is going to go from n equals 0 up to capital N. Now, why is this the same as well this sum here? Well, basically, all we're doing is we're splitting up our sum. Instead of just going straight from 1 up to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1, we're going to split it up based up on, uh, of, of powers of 2. So this is basically going to jump us from consecutive powers of 2. And we're starting from uh, n equals 0, because then that would make 2 to the 0, 1. So that would be our lower limit. So that ma matches up. And then we're going all the way up to 2 to the n, capital N plus 1, minus 1. So that matches up as well, of 1 over r. And now we can use our result from part a to find an upper bound on this thing here. This thing, according to part a, is less than or equal to, um, so k is 2 here, so it's going to be 2 to the n times 2 minus 1 times f of 2 to the n. Well, that's just going to be 1 over 2 to the n. Now, this is really nice because the 2 to the n and the 1 over 2 to the n cancel, and 2 minus 1 is just 1. So we're just summing up 1 from n equals 0 to n, and that's precisely n plus 1. And that gives us our upper bound. And as I say, you do something similar for the lower bound. OK, why does this mean that this uh, harmonic sum doesn't converge? Well, we've shown that the sum from r equals 1 to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 of 1 over r is at least n plus 1 over 2. And in order to calculate this, we're essentially just taking um, this sum and just taking the limit as n goes to infinity. And if we kind of by uh, finding this lower bound and doing the same thing here, we're showing that this thing as n goes to infinity is at least this thing. 
But this thing here very clearly goes to infinity as well, as n goes to infinity. And so therefore, this infinite sum must also diverge, not converge. OK, great. Final part here. By taking f of r is 1 over r cubed, we're going to show that this uh, sum, the sum from r equals 1 to infinity of 1 over r cubed, is less than or equal to 1 and a third or 4 thirds. Uh, and again, we're just going to use the exact same technique here, except now we only need the upper bound. So this sum here is equal to, we're going to do a double sum. So it's going to be the sum from n equals 0. Now, instead of going up to capital N, we're just going to go up to infinity um, from r equals 2 to the n up to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1, like so. And our f of r here is 1 over r cubed, which again is a decreasing function. So we can use part uh, a, or I say part a, this first bit up here. And now, again, we can find an upper bound on this. So this is sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Um, this sum here, according to what we did earlier, is less than or equal to 2 to the n times 2 minus 1 times 1 over 2 to the n cubed. And so if we simplify this, this is just the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the 2n. And now this is just an infinite sum which we can work out. It's a geometric sum. The first term here is 1. Uh, so if we use the formula a over 1 minus r, the ratio here is a quarter. So it's 1 over 1 minus a quarter, which is 4 thirds. And that there solves this problem. A pretty cool problem. Nothing, I'd say, too difficult if you've seen these sorts of uh summation tricks before where you, instead of adding up just straight one up to n you kind of split it into segments um but a pretty cool step three problem anyway thanks so much for watching i'll catch you in the next one have a great day